So Hulu came out with its fourth installment of Into the Dark, and it went a little something like this. <laughs> After Puka's success, I was really looking forward to this one, but damn, I just can't do it, guys. I can't give you some half-assed ending explained video where I talk about mirrors for 10 minutes. Seriously, this movie has more mirrors in it than Paris Hilton's house. That's hot. So I've decided to make a new series called Think Story Takedowns. I wish I could tell you what this movie's about, but you don't even find out until 42 minutes into it. That's nothing much at all. Yes, for 42 minutes, nothing happens. There's no action, just... Four girls in a room talking about whether their friend banged Leonardo DiCaprio or not. They at least have the decency to change locations to a sauna where they talk even more about crap that doesn't matter at all to the plot. In all honesty, this movie could probably be condensed to 10 to 15 minutes, but it was as if the producer said, hey, we need to stretch this out and, oh, can we have it set all in one location? It was so glaringly obvious that this movie was constrained by its budget, and when that seeps into the story, you start to get problems. But it's not just the pacing that has problems. The characters are a complete mess. So at that 42 minute mark, we finally learn what this movie is about. Four girls decide to reunite on New Year's, only for three of them to tie up the other and make her confess to killing a fifth girl she mercilessly bullied into committing suicide years ago. And yes, it's that convoluted, and yes, there are many problems. First of all, these girls have no exit plan. They commit not only kidnapping, but assault to one of the most up-and-coming social media stars. How do they expect to get out of this? And what if she refuses? Like, she obviously will. Are they going to kill her? Of course not. So Alexis, our main character's big plan, is to dress her up like old Greg. I'm old Greg. Yeah, that'll do it, Alexis. You got her now. And this is where things go completely off the rails. Kayla, the only somewhat reasonable character in this entire film, rushes off to the bathroom, not being able to take what's going on, and Alexis follows, leaving Chloe and Danielle all alone. Now, Chloe is one of the stupidest characters I have ever seen in any movie ever. She decides to free Danielle after Danielle promises her a segment on her new TV show. Like, you actually believe her? You just tied her up and were complicit in a crime, you dumb dumb. Her character arc is completely bonkers. She goes from Alexis's side to Danielle's, then from just wanting to scare the girls they end up locking in the sauna for a bit, to flat out wanting to murder them, then feels sorry when she actually does kill Kayla, then to feeling okay about it. God, you're good at this. She is all over the map. And my favorite is how Danielle convinces Chloe to murder the others just by saying, you wouldn't want them to spread rumors about us, would you? Yes, the old they might spread rumors so you should murder them technique. But even more troublesome is our protagonist, Alexis. She is so extremely unlikable and unsympathetic, it's hard to root for her. Maybe we're supposed to feel bad because of her scar or that she's a struggling babysitter. But you could probably take that out of the movie and it wouldn't change anything. And speaking of change, her character doesn't go through any. She basically has this plan, goes through with it, and doesn't learn anything along the way. And if we're going to talk about the ending where she takes over as Danielle's protege, <laughs> Don't even get me started. How did she get away with all this? There are like three dead people in her house, and you're telling me people aren't like, hmm, maybe she had something to do with this. And even though Alexis has been talking in this video for over a minute, when we pull back, it shows the video has only been playing for 10 seconds. I guess that's the type of service you get on Totally Tubular. But let's get back to some more stupid shit, like Kayla's car breaking down right outside Alexis's house. Right outside. What? It was like the writer was like, okay, we need to have it so that they can't use the car, but we need to get them there. What can we do? Oh, make it break down right when they get there. Convenient. Or how about the glass in every window of this home has been specially tempered? Someone falls out a window in your home and the logical thing to do is temper all the glass. Were the parents like, hey, we don't want another suicide, kids running out our windows, let's just be safe and install bulletproof glass in case anyone else wants to kill themselves again. What? And speaking of death, the kills in this movie are pretty lame. Nothing new or exciting, it's all stuff we've seen in other horror movies like knocking your head or getting stabbed. And I think the editor kind of knew this because in order to make the death of Chloe seem more shocking, because she just kind of tumbles down the stairs and dies, they did this. What the hell was that? 
I laughed out loud with the quick cuts of that music. But the deaths are equally predictable because the director uses this technique called Chekhov's gun way too liberally. So for those of you who don't know, Chekhov's gun basically means if you show something like a gun, you better see it fired later on. And damn do they use it here where the camera just lingers on a set of golf clubs for an awkward amount of time. Hmm, I wonder if those will come into play later on. Or how about these knives? Hmm. Also, why does Alexis throw Danielle's phone, nearly smashing it? Don't they need that phone for their plan to expose Danielle on her own Instagram? I mean, they could use someone else's phone to log in, but what if she doesn't know her password? And last but not least, for a horror movie, there's almost no tension here. Because in order to have tension, we, the audience, need to have some piece of information that the characters do not. For example, in Carrie, how we know this bucket of blood might fall, but Carrie doesn't. That's tension. But because every character's motivations are hidden or extremely unclear for most of the film, there's almost none of this until the last 20 minutes of the movie. So what did you think? Did you like this heaping pile of garbage? Should I do more takedown videos? Leave a comment below and make sure to smash that like button as if it were made of tempered glass. And until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.